All right, we're back. Taking uh, another shot at uh, Mario before 40. World 1-1 one, one, once again. I have sort of decided that maybe I should try and do these early worlds quickly for the sake of uh, getting to, you know, the more challenging parts and spending a little more time there. Because otherwise, I don't know if I've got much of a shot at this. Good lord. On the other hand, sometimes slow is steady and steady is fast. As we say in the world of uh, gun shooting, shooting guns. <laughs> Let's just see. Wasting my time, fireworks. That's a weird little animation they put in here, isn't it? It's like, we need to be clear that what's happening is he's going into an underground world or something. But it doesn't seem necessary. Wobop? Couldn't do this the fastest way without the mushroom. Just, I'll just need to take my chances to run where I can, I guess. I should look up speed running tips. Not because it's like... I want to do this fast as possible and win, but because I'm like, you know, it would just help me get through these early levels a little quicker, and that would probably be a good thing. Whoa! I mean, I would estimate that it would take me around an hour to beat this game if, when and if I eventually do it. I'm going to be kind of sad if I'm still playing this like in March. Um, and haven't gotten the chance to move on. You know, part of the fun of this particular, you know, Mario Before 40 challenge was sort of like, well, you know, the games aren't that hard, so I could probably... It seems doable, and it doesn't seem like I'm likely to get super, super stuck. Um, so maybe I would get to play a little bit more, more game. But... I don't know, I may be seeing that I'm mistaken. Horribly mistaken. Oh, fuck. <laughs> ah! Alright, did it. Did it. it! Would probably be good if I could get the timing down for like running under him or something. Maybe I should practice these fights. It's like part of me has thought about like if I can't get this, oh, maybe what I should do is like get to a certain point and then use a save state to practice a level. I can't decide how how badly that messes with the purity of the the goal here. It seems like that's outside the normal parameters that I set at the beginning. But you know, that's when I was barely 39. I was a young man, I was optimistic about my ability. I was like, that's not that hard of a game. People have beaten that game. It can be done. Certainly, I, I'm certain there are many, many uh, average video game players who have beaten this game. So it, it felt very doable, and now it feels less doable just because I've put a modest amount of time into it and haven't immediately gotten good at it. You know, I guess it, the other thing is, like, I finished the first Castlevania and the third, which I thought was hard and horrible and I hated, ultimately. Um, I finished Ghosts and Goblins, 
And ghouls and ghosts. Super ghouls and ghosts? I can never remember which one's the super one. Ghosts and goblins, ghouls and ghosts. Don't you think it's weird that they changed... So super is what you did, right? Super Mario World. And you're like, okay. Super Mario World. I guess Super Mario already had Super in it, didn't it? Is that why they called it the Super Nintendo? Because of Super Mario? Um, my point is, I finished some tough games. Now, these were not uh, easily won victories. <laughs> these were hard-won victories. Um, as this is proving to be. Um, but I, I did it. It just took a lot of you know, trial and error, I guess. And that's kind of how this is going. It's taken me a lot more trial and error than I thought. Not a lot more, but more. Definitely more. I want to be instantly good at things. I, I thought I would, like, grow out of that as an adult, and I definitely have not. And I feel like most people do not. Isn't that why most people give up on, like, a fitness goal? Because they're like, I wasn't instantly good at this activity, so I quit. You know, I didn't instantly enjoy it, uh, so I quit. And by instantly, I feel like maybe the only thing that changes is as an adult, instantly gets a little longer. You're like, I gave it three weeks instead of one time. But, uh, yeah, it still feels like, as an adult, you're kind of like, uh, no, I still want to be instantly good at, it, at things. That might be a good, like, m low level superpower. You know, where you're like, um, the one I always thought of was like, you wouldn't need to sleep. You could if you wanted to for some reason, but you wouldn't need to. I always thought would be a good superpower, but maybe being sort of instantly good, being Taskmaster in uh, Marvel Comics. If you're not familiar with Taskmaster, um, he's a, a villain, usually. It's kind of like one of those villains, I think, who is only villainous because he's like a mercenary. So he basically doesn't give a shit. Um, so then he kind of becomes good sometimes because he's like, whatever, you know, the person paying me is not paying me enough for this shit. So I'm out of here. And the superheroes are like, seriously, you're just going to leave? You're not going to like get revenge or do whatever? And he's like, I'm a professional. I don't know what kind of shit you guys, what kind of show you're running here, but like, I just, I do my job, and that's it. Taskmaster has good li work-life balance, unlike most superheroes. He's kind of like, you know, I do what I get paid to do, and that's it. That's where I draw the line. Oh, fudge. Oh, fudge. Sure do hate these guys. Fudge. Um... I could also try and get that, you know... Infinite Lives trick... On this level. And try and ensure my victory that way, but... I'm not sure about that. I've never been able to do it. Fuck, <laughs> damn it. You could get infinite lives, or you could lose one life there. You know, those are the... That's the level of play I'm at. It's like, Pete, you can't be focused on infinite lives. You gotta get... Not lose the one life you have would be great. Oh, shit. This is not going well for me. I mean, I could just play this level over and over until I get the infinite lives to work. I just don't really know how. Like, it's like you have to do it one time and see if you can get it to work. That was something I did use save states to try and make happen before. I was like, all right, I'm going to save this uh, game like right when I'm at that part and see if I can get the infinite lives. And I just, I never could. Nope. I don't know how to do it. It's officially 
true that I don't know how. I feel like it's got to be closer to the edge, but I'm not sure. I remember trying to look through for like a, a more thorough walkthrough or something that told you exactly how to do it, and it seemed difficult to find. Maybe I didn't search hard enough. It seems very likely. Again, instantly want to be good at something includes like, I just instantly want to know a piece of information. And if I can't find it, I'm like, well, fuck it, must not exist. The only explanation is that it doesn't exist. Not that I'm like searching the wrong thing or something. <laughs> it's everyone's fault but me. Everyone's an idiot except for me. Wonk. Sometimes my hand gets kind of numb when I play video games. That seems weird, doesn't it? That doesn't seem like a good thing. Probably, uh, contorting my hands weirdly. I wonder if they've made an NES controller that is, like, a little bit larger. Because this feels like it's made for kid hands, for sure. As opposed to adult hands. Or, you know, maybe it's like, this is kind of the middle ground that kids could probably handle and adults could also handle. Jeez. Waiting for this one asshole. <laughs> Ta -da 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 -da. I mean, the first three worlds should be not too hard, but that doesn't really mean anything. You know what they should quote-unquote be? Doesn't seem to have much, uh, hold a lot of weight. As far as my, I guess, playing ability goes, you know, where I'm like, you should be able to do this just fine. And my, my play skill ability is like, oh? Should you? I'm surprised that um, the axe from these games, from this game, hasn't really made like a big reappearance in like Mario lore. Like whatever happened to that axe? If that's what you use to defeat Bowser, wouldn't it be like a famous object? You know what I mean? It'd be like if someone had stabbed Hitler with a sword. Why did I change the object? It could be an axe. Someone st cut Hitler's head off with an axe. I think that axe would be somewhere. You know what I mean? In a museum or something? This axe belongs in a museum. That's when you know you really made it like as a uh, evil dictator. If they're like, the implement that was used to kill you should be kept in a museum, it's like, eh, I think you did it. So we're coming up at about just a little under 15 minutes for f World 4-1. I don't know why I'm updating you on that. That's information that's easier for you to find than for me to find. You're like watching a video right now. I debated like making this to um, whether I should include my face or, you know, video of me. And I decided against it because... I just feel like 90% of the time, it, it's like filming yourself masturbating or something where I'm like, you know, I'm sure that 90% of the time that I'm playing a video game, I'm just making like a dumb face, like, duh, you know, as I'm trying to do this. So it's kind of like, well, why would I do that? That seems like a... Does the internet need that? Just me, like, looking blankly into a screen like, dumb. <laughs> I don't think so. I, you know, the, but, you know, the argument against that, of course, is, uh, does the internet need anything? I mean, the internet does not need me playing this, uh, 
to exist either. So, you know, maybe that's a bad standard to go by. What does the internet need? What do I want to give it is the real question. But I don't want to give it uh, my dumbfounded face. So the answer is the same, regardless of whether it's what I want or the internet wants. So, you know, that's what's known as synergy. <laughs> my lack of care for the flag is uh, becoming very obvious. When I play this with Poon Master Flex, she hates that so much. When I just sort of am like, whatever. Just trying to get through the game. Hmm, okay. I know it's top. And then I think it's this. Whoa! Yeah. Flame is a good sign. Not bad so far, huh? I even got a one-up from coins. Can you believe that? I can't. You know, I guess to high score this game, you would have to kind of play it without... Like, play it all the way through um, without dying. Although I guess unless you... You did like the one-up trick, right? That gives you a shitload of points. So maybe the high score in this game is not something that's like all that interesting. I've never really gotten into like speed running games. I mean watching them is okay. I like I like the version of speed running where they're just trying to play through the game the sort of, let's call it, natural way as quickly as possible. So, like, in this game, I think that would allow for, like, using a warp zone. Um, but would not allow for, like, use a weird glitch that, you know, you fall through the floor and end up ten levels ahead or whatever. There's a lot of that shit, like, in Zelda. It seems like the Zelda games are built in a way where it's like, Okay, you just, you do this thing, you blow up this wall, or you blow Link through a wall, and then he's in Ganon's castle at the very fucking beginning of the game. And then you just, if, if you can gut it out and beat him with three hearts, you're golden. But you know, that's not, that's not as fun for me. Oh, ho, ho. how lucky. That seems like a very intentional game design choice to give you a a mushroom, but they're like, we'll let you have a mushroom, but not a flower. Like if there had been a flower, if that had been a higher block that I could have reached, they'd be like, well, we don't want him to get a flower, just a mushroom. That's all he's. That's all you're getting, Bucko, Buckface. <laughs> Woo. I would like to make a video of me going to a shooting range and shooting a gun and the gun makes that noise. I would be amused by that. No one else but me. And that's what I'm concerned with. It's me, hi. I just want to amuse me. Um, I've had this idea the other day. So I, I, I come up with things. In case you haven't noticed from this, one of the things I like to do is come up with, you know, weird tasks or challenges for myself or, like, I want to make every kind of thing at some point. And one of the things I want to make is an album. Um, that reminded me of it because I was like, we should make a Taylor Swift, like, parody album. And all the songs are about cats. Because I was like, Poon Master Flex, if you want to meet Taylor Swift, that seems like the road. Because it's like, I know she likes cats. And if you did, like, good, sort of faithful parodies of her songs, 
um, but they were about cats. That may come across her radar. It's me, hi, I'm the problem kitty. <laughs> Etc. But the, the one that I really want to do for me is about farts. And it's, uh, I've gone back and forth. Sometimes it's just a bunch of different parody songs and they're all about farts. Um, this is probably most uh, well known to anyone who knows me uh, because I worked on a parody of Nelly's Hot in Here that's about farts. Um, I'm blasting farts in here, so take off all your clothes. I am farting so much, I'm going to blow my clothes off. <laughs> Which is really stupid. But the original lyrics to that song are extremely stupid. It's getting hot in here, so take off all your clothes. I am getting so hot, I'm going to take my clothes off. It's like the backup singer is just re-saying what he said slightly in a slightly different order it's not like that it is that precisely and that never you know i always thought that was incredibly dumb and so then it it seemed really uh ripe for parody but then also what added to it was the beginning so the original song good gracious ass is bodacious uh my version good gracious ass is loquacious meaning very talkative meaning because it's an ass. Lots of farts. So I just, you know, that's where it all began. I don't have a bunch of other ones, um, except recently, and this is the other idea I had, uh, is to kind of do a series of sort of lounge singery songs about farts. You know, like uh, Frank Sinatra y stuff. She's been farting round town. Or, you know, I was thinking about the song that's like, Fever! Dun, dun. Except it's like, <laughs> Farts! She likes to shoot out farts. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> How much farting can one guy fart? <laughs> when he's making this album of art. It's about farts. But it's about more than just farts! You know, stuff like that. I think the reason that one appeals to me is because, like... I I know those singers... Uh, a lot of people like them, th that kind of singing, and that music has never appealed to me. Um, I didn't even like Richard Cheese, who is the guy who did, like, a bunch of, you know, like, metal songs, or, like, he would do a Disturbed song. Get up, come on, get down with the sickness. You know, and he would do it in that lounge style. I thought it was a funny concept. But I just, my distaste for that kind of music, I think. Uh-oh. My controller's not working. What happened? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hold on. Okay, I got it. Why did that happen? Was that the ghost? Ah, it stopped working again. What is going on? All right, please hold for technical difficulties. Okay, well, let's hope this continues working. Um, it would be unfortunate if it just... I mean, that was a good time for it to stop working. As far as, you know, I wasn't in any specific danger. If there was danger, it wasn't clear and present, so that's something. You know, sometimes this game is like... I'm just like waiting for this. I'm like, when am I going to get to go? Maybe never. Shit. 
Shit. Shit, shit, shit. Shit, everyone, shit. Shit. This is what I knew was coming, isn't it? But I was like, oh my god. Ah! I don't think he quite touched me. I, I want to take backs on that. I want to do over. And that's me being generous to the game, allowing it to uh, work properly. Okay. Alright. Here we are. Damn it. Oh no! Oh no. I'm gonna have to play all of World 6 again. Hmm. Don't like that. See, this is when, when you get slowed down. Because you're like, ah shit. I made an unfortunate move that resulted in me having to play the entirety. You know, if I had died enough times... Whatever. You know what I mean. Anyway, so Frank Sinatra style. Like, I never liked that style of singing very much. Um, it just felt to me like... I don't know. It never spoke to me. It's like, it just sounds like... It sounds like a lifestyle porn for a lifestyle that I'm not interested in. Like, ooh, let's go to Vegas and be in a lounge and, uh, you know, everyone's playing poker and I don't know. I hate that. There's nothing I hate more than a, like, poker scene in a movie, by the way. And I'll tell you why. A fictional poker scene, a fictional game of chance, is probably the most uh, pointless thing ever conceived. Because if you have a fictional game of chance, What's going to happen is whatever the creator of that fiction wants to happen or needs to happen for the story. So in other words, like, in real life, a game of chance, a real life story, a non-fiction story about, like, I went to Vegas and I won money and I couldn't fucking believe it, like, you know, I put it all on black and I won. That's a fun story. Um, because it's, like, so unlikely. But in the in the the context of a fiction it's really dumb because it's like well did the character need to win in order for the story to progress or need to lose in order for the story to progress um or break even for the story to progress you know what ha needed to happen for the story pro to progress what do you know is exactly what happened i'm shocked so I think I, I just feel like it's it's a lazy way. And they always do the same shit, too. I cannot tell you how many fucking things I've read or watched or, you know, whatever, where it's like a tough guy or you've got a detective and they're like, everyone who plays poker has a tell. You know, this guy raises his eyebrows whenever he's going to, like, uh, whenever he's bluffing or something like that. And I'm like, that is so fucking stupid. Because I'm like, I suppose if you had studied an individual for hours, like you'd studied footage of them for hours, um, and you'd seen them play hundreds of games via studying tape, yes, I suppose you could perhaps discover that they have a tell. But, you know, it's never going to be like he always scratches his eyebrow when he's bluffing. You know what I mean? And it's like... And then what always happens is the guy's always like, oh yeah, Steve always scratches his eyebrows when he's bluffing. And then Steve is like, I do not. And then he's like, oh shit, I do. He like realizes suddenly, oh yes, I do. Oh, thank goodness. Um, I hate that shit. That, I hate that shit so passionately. Because it's so stupid. It's like, I don't think that's how it works. I don't know much about poker and gambling. But I don't think it works that way. So I hate that. And I, I just, I hate that, like, storytellers present that to me like it's a new idea. The idea that, like, 
every poker player's got to tell. You know, and I'm like, oh, okay. That's what an original idea you've come up with for this story. Oh, you mean everybody has a quirk they, they do when they're lying? And it's like, I'm, a, I'm supposed to believe that you know every poker player's quirk. Meanwhile, like, you know, the lady who's playing poker, her husband doesn't know that that's what she does when she's lying. Like, if I said, what's a quirk that your wife exhibits when she's lying? Wouldn't be able to tell me. But this dude who is like, oh yeah, I'm James Bond, comes out of nowhere and is just like immediately identifies her, uh, her quirk, her thing, her tell. So stupid. Like what a monumentally stupid idea for a, a thing. And so it, what makes me crazy about it is it's like, it's a frequently used trope that sucks. I'm like, you know, a vampire is an overused trope however at least it's interesting it's like eh, you know vampires are like worth paying attention to it's it's a monster that eats people basically okay you know zombie novel it's like yeah the zombie novel has been done i i agree and uh probably overdone but at least it's interesting this fiction about, like, oh, everyone's got a poker tell or whatever is not interesting. It's just a thing. Huh? <gasps> Was that almost it? Blast. Damn and blast. Um, I hate it. I hate the, like, you know... I also hate, like, I'm, I'm a viewer. I'm watching the movie. So I know what everyone's got in their hand. And I, and it's like, the tension is like, is uh, the hero gonna make the right gameplay decision? Like, I don't think that what I'm doing here, I'm under no illusion that there's like, narrative tension to what you're seeing on the screen right now, me playing this video game. Oh my gosh, will he make the right decision? I, you know, probably not. But also, it's not really about, like, a decision, right? It's not an intellectual decision that I'm making. Which is probably why I'm failing so badly at this game. Um, it's a, you know, it's more like watching a sport. Now, fiction, you could say the same thing about fictional sports, and I would totally agree with you. It's like, well, of course, if you want them to win the big game, they're going to win the big game. But I think sports... Sports do a better job of, like, telling a story where it tricks you into thinking it's about winning the big game, and then it's not. You know, Rocky being the prime example, right? Where people who've never seen Rocky assume that he wins the fight in the first movie, and he definitely does not. And it becomes not about that. He's basically not intending to win the big fight. He just wants to go the distance. And that's why it's a great movie. Or uh, there's the movie Warrior, which is about, like, ultimate fighters, right? Come on! That cheated me. Um, ultimate fighting championship kind of thing. And you're like, well, by the time you get to the end, it's really not important who wins. There's, like, other things happening in the movie that are more important than who wins the fighting tournament. And that's why that movie works. And with like poker stuff, it just seems like it's it stays about on the level of uh, is the hero gonna win the poker game? Also, I'm like, who fucking cares if James Bond wins a poker game? I just can't make myself care about James Bond in particular because I think it's like, um, he's just like a pointless character. Because I'm like, I don't care. Like, why does everyone care if James Bond, it's like, well, I hope he gets laid this time. Who cares? He's been laid like a billion times. Every time he goes on a mission, he gets laid. That's like if every day I went to work, I met a different beautiful woman and we had a brief romance. You know what I mean? Like... Where's the tension in that? Why do I care? Why do I care? It's like, do you care if, like, one of the most handsome and 
talented men in the world succeeds, and I'm like, not really. Not really. People who hate Tom Brady will say they love James Bond. Explain that. Oh my god. These Squidwards are really, uh, giving me a really hard time today. I don't know how I was defeating them before, more handily. Just going fast as fuck. Oh shit. Woo! 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 Ah! Run! Come on! How am I supposed to do that? He's blocking the exit! Man, these guys really didn't give me a hard time before. Now I'm... Uh, really struggling. Not cool. Not cool, water level. I don't even remember what fucking 7-3 is. Who the hell knows? Oh my god. Ugh. This might not be my best showing today. I don't know if I'm gonna make it to World 8. Oh! <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna make it to World 8. I don't know if I'm gonna make it to World 7 3. It seems less likely by the minute. My only hope is that uh, World 8, the castle, Jesus, is like one of those mazes or something that I can easily defeat. That it's not a test of skill so much as a just a figure it out kind of thing. But I don't know. I don't know what's worse. I don't know what's more difficult for me. Because it's like, if it's a maze, I probably won't be able to beat it the first time. So, you know, and there's a good chance that the first time I get there, I will have uh, one life or, you know, maybe two. So that's not a good situation for, like, a castle where you have to try and do it over and over. <laughs> My god. Well, that's something. Alright, let's try this. <laughs> cool. Seemed like I almost got infinite lives there, didn't it? Didn't that feel like that? I wonder what's going on with this, uh, controller. It's this cord all wrapped up. All right, here we go. Let's defeat this. Oh shit! Well, it's definitely something with the cord. That's settled. <laughs> you stop moving, maybe that's when you get in trouble. When you decide to just go on the very bottom. Um, that seems to not work. Ha! Eat a humongous bag of dicks, you bastards. Did it. I fucking did it! I had the experience of waking up very early this morning. Um, for, you know, like, work-type reasons. And uh, that meant I ate lunch at, like, 10 a.m. I was like, I'm hungry for lunch. It's probably about lunchtime. And then I was like, it's 10 a.m. So what I did is went ahead and ate lunch. Because, I mean... It's all relative. It was like a legitimate brunch instead of, you know, four hour ladies drinking mimosas brunch. I'm not a big fan of the brunch thing. 
I mean, like, now more than ever. I think pre-pandemic it was like, eh, it's just not my thing. And now I'm like, what are you, crazy? What is this experience providing for you? I don't understand the brunch experience. I mean, it's definitely not for me. So maybe me not understanding it is kind of like proof of concept that it works. Okay, fuck. Top? Bottom? Middle? Top? Oh! It's gotta be the top because it's harder, right? Bottom. Sorry, I did top. Top? Yes! All right. I'm trying to untangle this cord in hopes that I haven't ruined it. Cords and cables, man. All right, 8-1, I made it. You know what, I was not optimistic about this, so I'm glad I made it. <laughs> right. It's all coming back to me. Probably what would help me beat this game would be playing it like five days in a row as opposed to like once a week. I feel like that would be a, the way to, you know, gain experience or leverage experience. Because the way I do it now, I, I gain experience, but it's not really useful experience, you know? Shit. And I just end up dying a bunch of ways that I really shouldn't. But uh, here I am. Because I feel like by the end of playing the last couple times, I could get through this level pretty easily. It was kind of the next two that really... The next one? The next one, I think, that really fucked me up a lot. I don't even know if I've been uh, to 8-3... And if I have, it's probably been, like, one time. If I'm thinking correctly. About what's what. Well, I tried. Whew. That was generous. Thanks, game. No! God, no. Well, I did make it to World 8, so I do feel pretty good about that. I'm at, like, the 40-minute mark. So, if I spent a third of my time on World 8, that would be 20 minutes. That wouldn't be so bad. I mean, I do like this game doesn't have a ton of preamble. You kind of just get right back into playing. It's not like a huge animation of, like, your death or whatever. I appreciate that. Ghosts and Goblins, you gotta do your... Every time, and it's like... That doesn't seem long. But by the time you've done it... As many times as you will do it to play that game, you're like, fuck you, and you're dun 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 Alright, no one needs it, no one wants it. Whoever composed this is has wasted their life. Just irritating me. I want to compose a piece of music that will be played at a time that, you know, is fine, and slowly wears a person down. Just so, you know, their body is destroyed and their soul is showing through at the uh, worn out patches. Ha!
I really do want to dress as this version of Mario for Halloween one year. Is it offensive for me to put on, like, makeup to look like this? To look that shade? Like, is he supposed to be... I don't think he's supposed to be, like, Italian. You know, and they're like, he would have a sort of bronzy skin because he's an Italian plumber or whatever. I'm pretty sure this was just, like, the available color that worked. But I'm not 100% sure. But it does seem like it would be fun to be that Mario. And it seems weird that that version of Mario hasn't come back. And where are the flags with the stars on them? Oh, yeah. Okay, I have beaten this one, too. It's the next one where shit gets a little too real. Oh my god. <laughs> yep. That one psychs me out every time. I don't know why. I guess because it's a difficult jump. If I'm being unpoetic about it, I do know exactly why. Because it is... it does appear quite difficult. There are lots of ways to screw it up. It's kind of like the one in that uh, mini castle where you have to drop down instead of trying to just jump over the gap. You drop down, I don't know, it's maybe like world three or four, it's pretty early on. And you have to drop down instead of trying to just jump over the gap because if you try to jump over the gap, you will hit the ceiling and then fall to your demise. Oh my God. Um, and that one psychs me out every time. I get very worried about it, even though now I'm like, I know how to do this now. Now I know how to do this now, even though now, now, now to now. La, 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 la. All right, this is where shit gets really real. Oh, fuck. Well, glad I did such a good showing on that one. Good Lord. All right. <sighs> you know, this turned to angry quest to finish faster than I expected. I thought I would enjoy this more, but I've already lost my lost my pleasure for the game. Love of the game. Maybe it, maybe it's time to get the power. Nintendo power. There must be like tips and trick books about this game, right? From the era. Wonder if I could get any of those. Do you think like libraries still have them? Like I could get them on interlibrary loan? Forgot which level I was on. Okay. It seems like something. I'm, sh you know what? I'm sure some library out there still has them based on some of the things I've seen that some libraries still have. I, I don't, well, no. I was gonna say I hate to smack talk libraries, but actually I don't care. I think it's fine. Um, sometimes you go in a library, especially at a university, and they're just like, it seems like their collection, their policy for what they keep and what they get rid of is like, what if someone someday wanted to write a research paper on the history of books about this topic? You're like, I mean, yeah, I guess if someone wanted to write... I went to a university library, and I found a book of, like, party games that, you know, were originally published in, like, Playboy or something, or Penthouse. And it was the dumbest shit, you know? And it's like, ooh, use these jokes to entertain your friends. And they weren't even, like, super offensive or anything, which was kind of what I was hoping for. I mean, why else do you pick that up? You don't pick that up hoping that it's like, oh, maybe I'll find a legitimately good joke that I can tell my coworkers in 2022. You pick it up because you're like, 
Is this gonna be sexually offensive? Gender role offensive? Like, uh, you know, which way is it gonna go? And it wasn't even that, it was just they sucked. And I was like, wow. Um, but then, you know, I was looking through it and the party games were like really dumb things that don't really make sense and I was like, okay, so obviously this was a cash grab. Um, and I was like, why does the library have this? Like, what possible use could this have? I, I just couldn't picture the person who would pick it up and, like, find it useful or find it, like, interesting regarding the time period. Um, and even if you were doing that, you could probably... This is the perfect thing, in my opinion, for, like, Internet Archive to just have on uh, their free PDF section. Because it's like, look, man, nobody is... the. Nobody is interested in this, uh, except in, like, secondary market kind of way, and in an ironic or, you know, ironic as in not the intended use kind of way. Nobody's getting this because they're like, Playboy is going to have good ideas for my party. Everyone's picking it up like me, being an idiot, just being like, ho ho ho. Let's see how this tells you to convince your wife to dress in a bunny costume. So it's like, I don't know. Does that need to be on the library shelf? I mean, I'm not like, get that shit off the shelf, it's fucking offensive! I'm just like, do you need to waste your space with that? I mean, nobody's checking that out, by the way. There was another book, it was like a, you know, a fitness program book that was legit, in my opinion. But it was, uh... It was so beat to shit that I was like, again, this is a very replaceable book. Your copy is completely beat to shit. This is a great thing to replace. You know, if you have any money to spend on your books, uh, this is a good one to replace because uh, A, it's not expensive, and B, it's beat to shit, so obviously it's gotten some use. You know, without being able to look at the statistics, which you can do, by the way, if you doubt doubt my opinion, just look at the stats on it and then make a, the correct decision. But um, use use that information to uh, either purchase a new one or not. In other words, if it's on the shelf, uh, it's either worth purchasing a new one or it's worth getting rid of. But, like, so many libraries let so many items live in this limbo between, uh, this purgatory. Where they're like, well, we don't want to get rid of it. But we don't want to get a new one. And I'm kind of like, you gotta think about your library. Like, you have to imagine each spot on the shelf is worth a dollar. Uh, and you pay a dollar's rent a month. Each book pays a dollar's rent a month. And it's like, well, if it gets checked out, I don't know, every three months, it can pay the rent. And if it doesn't, it cannot. And uh, it should go away. Hey, I made it to three. While I was, you know, ranting and raving about <laughs> the thrilling world of library deaccessioning. Wah! I wish these bullets could shoot these guys. That would be a quality of life improvement. Damn it. All right. One shot. One opportunity. It is kind of hard, like, this game at this juncture, because you do have, like, kind of a stretch between attempts at the part that you're struggling with. You know, because now I gotta go back and do the same thing again. This is like the Nintendo hell. And probably why I decided to go ahead and do continues, because if I couldn't continue um, from the same world, I mean, I would get one chance to to play level 8-3 and then have to play the entire game again. And that would just be so awful. <laughs> like, that is that is the definition of hell. Just, like, stuck playing... Well, that wouldn't be a terrible hell. 
hell is you have to play a, um, not, not incredible by today's standards, but thoroughly entertaining and well-made video game over and over. Oh no! <laughs> I like the uh, Goomba's mean eyebrows. Whoever added that touch did a damn good job. Damn fine. I don't know what they're mad about, and I don't care. Exhaustion has set in. I have nothing to say. That's not really true, but I have very little to say. Other than, like, get me out of here. Let's do this, come on. Let's go, is that what gamers say these days? But the let's is just me. This is no one's fault but my own. feels insulting, doesn't it? The one firework. See, like, I got a little technique down for this part, right? Because it's like, alright, I know what's coming. Oh, shit. Look at me, I've got this down. Follow my example. I feel like the Hammer Brothers in the upcoming... Oh, shit. Upcoming stage are like... So unpredictable, though. Oh, no! Oh, no. Oh, no! Hmm. Thought that would work. All right, well, not a not a good showing today, but uh, keep your chin up, me, and maybe we'll get there. <laughs>